So I'm here with Darian DJ Young, a name the pickleball world has been hearing a lot about lately. He's a player some have called the most talented pickleball player on tour. He won the 2021 World Pickleball Championship and lately can be found tearing up APP and MLP events. He's a top 15 player in the world and no surprise, a former high level tennis player. You will be hearing his name a lot on the pro tour for many years to come. And you'll be hearing from him right now. Thanks for coming on. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. So everyone has their own pickleball origin story. Some were forced to play. <clears throat> some got tricked into playing. Others got convinced by their tennis player friends. And some actually said to themselves, let me try a sport called pickleball. Can you walk me through how you first heard about the sport and then how you tried it and how you really fell in love with it? Yeah, so basically, I used to play tennis at a uh, Bobby Riggs tennis club back in the day when I played tennis uh, growing up. Uh, so Steve Dawson, owner of you know that club and you know pickleball legend at this point, um, he was my tennis coach. So I used to play tennis there, and then around 16 or so, I quit playing tennis. And then one day, I was 18, working at Chipotle, you know, and going to high school. And then I get a call from Steve, and I'm like. I don't know what he wants. Like he, he's not the guy to call. He's not going to like text you or whatever. I was like, okay, I'll pick it up. This and that. It's like, Hey, and I'm like, Hey, what's up, Steve. And it's like, I got the perfect sport for you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Just cause I haven't heard from the guy like in two years, you know, I had quit tennis, whatever. And I actually went out with my dad and we took a, uh, like a, you know, beginner's clinic. And Steve was there kind of walking us through, helping us. And I hated it. I actually hated it. I don't know why. Just I, you know, I was 18. I still thought that tennis was cool. I was playing basketball and working, you know, to call it whatever, going to school. And my dad started playing and then he became a 5 0 quickly. And like three months later or so, he's like, hey, like I know how to play, like, you know, come out and play with us. So we went out. And I played and I thought it was okay, whatever is decent. And then we played singles. And as a tennis player, I was like, dad, you're just kind of old. You're just going to get beat up, like whatever. Yeah. And then he actually, he actually just like beat me up so bad. I was just so upset. <laughs> just so upset. And, and I actually started going because I, I didn't want to lose to my dad. So I was like, I'll just get good enough. Like I'll be, and then I'll be done with it. And then the better I got, the more fun it became. Yep. And then I just, I just got super hooked. And then Steve kind of took me under his wing and Callan Dawson, you know, super good friend of mine at the time, uh, his brother used to play to Tyler, Daw Tyler Dawson. So they all kind of helped me, you know, shape into the player that I am today. And they were all super nice. They used to play with me and my dad when I was like, you know, four five five zero. Yeah. And yeah, here I am today, I guess. <laughs> That's, that's how it goes for most people. Once you get a little taste, it's kind of hard to, uh, to turn back. Yeah, totally. I got to ask this because I'm a <clears throat> Chipotle fan. Were, were you a generous Chipotle scooper or were you, were you kind of stingy with it? No, I was, I was generous. I was <laughs> very generous. Like people like, so there's a person in tortilla, right? And there's like a salsa person. And then there was a um, cashier person, right? You, you can only be one at a time. Right. So anytime I pass like the bowl or the burrito to my salsa person, they'd be like, is this double? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I not very stingy. I was super generous. I used to have like all my friends come in and just like fucking just give them meat, just like free or whatever. I love yeah. it. Um, so I know we're here to talk about pickleball and we'll be doing that for most of the interview, but I'm also curious, what do you think you'd be doing right now if you weren't playing pickleball? I think, luckily, fortunately, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't because I, I actually never really wanted to go to school. That was, or, you know, uh, college. I finished high school. And I, part of the reason why I quit tennis is because I was like, well, I'm not going to play tennis in college anyway. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, I really don't know. Um, I'm all, I'm honestly really into sports, anything fitness, anything outdoorsy. I used to play a lot of video games. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. Um, but I truly don't know what I would be doing. And luckily I found pickleball, like, you know, at the end of my senior year in high school. So this is kind of all I know as of right now. 
well, you know, the, the way the sport has evolved and, and, you know, the places it's going, you could be involved in football on the court and off the court the rest of your life. So you won't ever have to yeah. answer that question. Yeah, exactly. Very fortunate for sure. So you were born and raised in Spain. Um, and obviously with pickleball being born in the U S and the majority of events coverage and players being here, America for now is really the main hub of pro level pickleball. So I'm wondering, do you see a trend of, of international players starting to move into pro pickleball, or do you think we're far away from having pros from all around the world? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think maybe not far away, but maybe not, maybe not super close. I think you'll have people, uh, you know, maybe travel in from, you know, maybe Canada, which is closer than like Spain, for example, you know, play more tournaments like Steve Beacon does, you know, very good player, uh, better human too. Um, but I would say we're still a little bit further away from that as of right now. Yeah. Um, aside from really the pro players, what do you think needs to happen to get tens of millions of people from all around the world recreationally playing pickleball? I think, I think probably just having, having more celebrities involved in it. You know, maybe more TV coverage. Uh, people like, you know, obviously, Kevin Durant, you know, uh, if any professional tennis players were out there playing and posting about it, and I think people would be more open to trying it out and playing it more often. Uh, but as of right now, even though it's not, uh, I think it's still kind of viewed as, a, you know, maybe a sport, right? Like, not everyone, like, respects it as much as they should, in my opinion. Um, but I think it just takes like just more eyeballs in the sense of like, you know, Kevin Durant posting about it, you know, he's playing pickleball and then you just have like, you know, a hundred thousand people more viewing it. Right. I think, I think just more just for the sport to be more out there than it is right now. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's gaining more and more traction every day. Um, yeah, totally. So I want to switch over to a little bit about you as a player and kind of, you know, <clears throat> heights, uh, from, from playing pro pickleball. You're highly ranked in both men's doubles and mixed doubles. I'm wondering what advice would you give to a doubles team, either men's, women's, or mixed, to be as prepared as possible for their next tournament? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say if you if you know who you're playing with, uh, you know, a week or two in advance. I think you need to, first of all, drill with each other quite a bit. So you kind of can learn, uh, you know, your qualities and your not so qualities, right? Like it, what you're good at and what you're not good at. And then after that, I think you should probably, you know, play some games together as well, just to kind of make sure that, you know, I know which ball I'm taking and I know which ball you want to take and, and vice versa. Uh, just a lot of playing together. I think chemistry is something that can actually be built. I don't think it's, uh, you know, we either play well together or we don't. I think it's something that can be worked on. And obviously, some people are going to be better than others. Right. Um, but for the most part, I think it's something that it takes work, just like any other relationship, you know, a friendship or a boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever it is. It just takes work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when you're, when you're playing your match, uh, let's say you and your partner aren't playing too great, might be down in a match. Um, <clears throat> What's your first move? What do you what do you look to do to try and turn things around? Well, firstly, call a timeout. <laughs> um, but I would say for the most part, you just have to remind yourself that you're out there because you enjoy it, right? Like if you're if you're playing pickleball, even a tournament, and I think I think it's fine to get mad at yourself as long as you're not getting mad at your partner, because you know, you can't really control what they're doing, but you can control what you're doing is and what's going through your mind. So you just kind of try and turn those negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Uh, and just remind yourself that you're out there also playing because you love the sport and you also just have fun with it, right? And hopefully you're going to choose a partner that you do enjoy playing with as well because I think that'll help. Um, as much as you want to win, you can win with somebody that you you know you get along with as well off the court as you do on the court. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you think that you play better when you're far ahead in the lead? or way behind? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, when I'm like ahead, uh, I feel like I'm somewhat known to like 
you know, if I'm on and I just play well and then, you know, if I'm up like 4-0, I'm just like, you know, doing inside outs and earnings and hitting winners past you. And then that 4-0 it turns into like a, you know, 7-1 very quickly. Um, but I think it's also kind of known to where, you know, if you can get like five or six quick points on me, I'm just like, oh, my goodness, what is going on? Yeah. You know, so I wish – I mean, I think it is something that can be worked on. And I think uh, I'm getting better at it, obviously. But I would say, you know, that I wish it, w- it wasn't as m- that way as much as it is right now. Yeah. I mean, pickleball is a game of momentum, you know, whether <clears throat> in the lead yeah. or, or being down. It's, it's really all about the swings and being able to capitalize on those, those you know, positive spurts of playing. Um, I mean, obviously, the goal for any player is to be able to play at the top of their game, whether they're up or down. So I'm wondering if you have any tools – that you use to mentally equip yourself to be able to play your best at any situation in a match? Yeah, I would say, I would say just to not really worry about, you know, your partner as much. Don't worry about your opponents uh, because you, like I said, you can't really control that. Uh, but just like just keeping yourself accountable for how many, you know, mistakes you're making, what you're doing wrong. Also, what, do, what, do you, what you're doing right is important as well. Uh, but just, you know, being disciplined and keeping yourself accountable and just making sure that you're more worried about your own personal, um, what's the word, um, like how you're doing on the court, you know, with good, good body language and playing good pickleball and making the right choices than you are with like your partner or your opponents or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, and you know, we all have shots that we love hitting. I mean, I, I love my drive. I know you have a, a really crazy Ernie, um, but we have those nights where our favorite shot isn't working. And I mean, mm-hmm. the situation I run into is when I'm not making my drive, I keep driving because I want to make it. I want to prove to myself I can buy right. it. How do you contain yourself when you realize one of the shots you love hitting just isn't working? Well, uh, how I think it's just discipline, obviously. But I think I think just reminding yourself that most people play um, or are going to win more often when they just play good basic pickleball, right? Like when you watch, you know, all the top players playing, and when you watch them win, most of the time they're hitting very high percentage shots. So even if you think that your drive is really good, if you're not making not high percentage at that point. So then you have to go to something that's actually high percentage. And that's how, you know, that's how smart pickleball is played. And, you know, my good friend, Callum Dawson, one, at one time after we won, uh, I think it was, we won, I think WPC, like they asked, they asked him like, oh, how do you guys do it? And he's like, just textbook pickleball, you know, and that's really what wins tournaments. Because you can win a match by hitting good drives and some good coaches every now and then. But most people that win the actual tournament or even medal, they're usually just playing very just, you know, textbook pickleball, very just, you know, just thinking around, hitting good drops, good resets, countering when it's necessary. Um, so like I said, just reminding yourself that um, if the drive is not working, it's not a high percentage shot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I teach a lot of pickleball and even the, the beginners, I tell them there are only a few shots in pickleball. You really need to master. Most of it is, is, is learning how to play smart, you know, when to attack, you know, moving with your partner. Um, but in terms of the shots, the, the best way to play is, you know, sticking to the basics. Yeah, totally. Um, I agree. Especially in tournaments, many players will, will really make it a point to evaluate their opponents either during a match or before or, and really try and figure out their weaknesses and exploit them as much as they can. What approach do you take to, to seeking out your opponent's weaknesses and what's your strategy to, to deal with them and try and, you know, exploit them as much as you can? Uh, good question. Um, I would say most, for me personally, I've been playing enough tournaments and I watch enough pickleball on my own because I just really enjoy it uh, to where I kind of know everyone's you know weaknesses or strengths right uh but i would say the way to exploit it or the way to go about it um in my honest opinion i think you have to put to your strengths um because it doesn't matter if then again you know someone might think differently but 
it doesn't matter if you have a bad back end if I don't have the tools to get the ball over there. Right. Right. You see what you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm I'm overall more focused on myself, like I was saying before, like, okay, what am I good at? Like, am I really good at, you know, getting to the net, hitting drops and just grinding out some backing things and maybe getting a high ball and flicking it in front of me? I, if I'm really good at that, then I might just try and do that every single time. Right. Um, I just don't think, I just don't think, I think it's good to know their weaknesses, but I think it's way better to play to your strengths personally. Right. Absolutely. I mean, cause your strengths is the one thing you have full control over. You could think someone has a weakness, maybe a, you know, a, a backhand um, <clears throat> or a third shot drop. Maybe they were training that for the last three weeks and you have no idea. It's actually great. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And also part of it is uh, it's, I think in pickleball or let's say in tennis, right? Like in tennis, you can exploit something a lot better because the course a lot bigger and there's a lot more room to work with. But in pickleball, at least in the pro level, um, you know, if someone has a bad back end, then they're just going to earn you every single time. Right. <laughs> right. So it's not as easy to exploit as it is like in tennis, like, uh, you know, if someone has a bad back end in tennis, then you just want to hit everything to that spot. And the spot is huge. Right. Uh, but in pickleball is, it's not quite like that. So I think, I think just playing to your advantages, which is, you know, whatever you're good at, it's just overall better. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious, who are your favorite pros, pros to play with and your favorite pros to play against? Oh, that's controversial. <laughs> uh, do you want like a top three? Yeah, give me your top. Or... Yeah, you don't have to single anybody out. Can we give me your top? <laughs> Do you want to be in like order? What, whatever you're comfortable with. You could give me just a mix of, of three if you don't want to put any. <laughs> okay. So favorite to play with. I'm not going to say in order because then, you know, everyone's just going to take everything out of context. Right. Uh, are we talking about mixed or men's right now? Let's, let's start with, with men's doubles. Okay. Favorite and men's doubles. I would have to say, and then again, just like one of the top threes is, uh, Dylan Frazier. Uh, I, mean, I like to call him Baby Dill. You know, he's always Baby Dill to me. Uh, and he's just honestly a really good friend of mine uh, off the court too. Uh, so I think, and we're about the same age and we play well together and he's obviously an amazing player. So he's one of them. Uh, the other one would probably be Callan. Right. Uh, just because like, we go way back. Like I've known, I known the Dawson's for about 10 years now. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So I just, I've known him since like, I was basically 13 and I'm 22 now. Mm -hmm. So almost 10 years. And he kind of taught me how to play the game. And we played a, a lot last year together. And we're actually going to play this weekend together in Atlanta. Oh, nice. so I'm really looking forward to that. He's uh, and we also have some really good runs. Like at a, you know, PPA event we had second where we beat Ben and Matt and then we won WPC and so we had some good uh wins and then the third or the you know player would be whew, I got I gotta go with Mario <laughs> I gotta go with Mario Lorientos he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a super cool dude he I don't know how he does it. He's like married, has a kid, has a, has a, has a job, goes to school and plays pickleball. Wow. And he's just like out here grinding with all of us. Uh, you know, super nice guy. Uh, we, we speak Spanish to each other all the time. So we kind of have that going on for us and we just, we have a good time together. And he, he honestly puts up with me quite a bit too on the court. So I got to go with Mario. Yeah. He's got played with him a couple of times. He's a nice guy. Dude, he, he's awesome. Just like, just like a big dude of love. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mixed doubles. Give me, give me the run through. You, you could do them in a, a, you know, complete mix up again. So no one's feeling left out. Yeah. Okay. So mixed would be one of them has to be Vivian, Vivian David. Uh, she's a local here. She lives like probably five minutes away from me. We, we drill quite a bit together when we get a chance and we obviously play well, really well together, in my opinion. Uh, then I would say current car. 
um, she's just super easygoing, super nice person, always, always smiling, you know, kind of like Viv in that, in that sense. Uh, and we actually had some good results as well. I think, I think we play well together. Um, sometimes we're just not good enough. <laughs> uh, and then the third girl would be probably Coop, Andrea Coop. Yeah. Uh, we've we've had we played one or two together and we played like a tuesday night together and i mean she's fucking really good <laughs> i don't think she gets enough credit honestly she's really really good and she's also very easy going she's uh she's great off the court like she'll text me like hey how you doing this and that you know checking in just kind of like being a good person so Coop would be uh in that top three for sure there we go yeah um Sorry about the cousin, by the way. I'm trying to hold hold it back. Hey, be you. No worries. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> um. So that's a, that's a great mix of players. Um. I'm curious. I I read somewhere that your philosophy in pickleball, from something that you said, your philosophy in pickleball is that every ball is attackable. This was really exciting for me to read because that's also how I, I look at the game in some regards. Coming over from tennis literally everything was attackable for the first few months and it took me a while to you know tone down my shots but even now um i'm, I'm looking to attack when i can so I'm, I'm wondering if you could kind of go a little bit deeper into what you mean and how that mentality drives the way you play yeah so i really do believe every every ball is attackable right and i think a good uh, i think a good uh example of that would be toc I don't know if you watched the finals, uh, Ben and Colin against Madden Riley. I mean, it was just a fire fest, right? Like it just attack, 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 drive, attack. Uh, so if you, if those four players, which are probably, you know, the, some of the, you know, four best players in the world, right? If they can, if they can do it to each other, then you would only imagine that anyone else can do it to anybody else. Right. And I think you can see that like also at a 3.5 level where like, you know, when you hit a drop and it drops in kind of lands and then the other person smacks it and the, you know, the person gets like, Oh, what did just happen? I'm, you know, they're supposed to hit a soft. It doesn't quite work that way. Uh, so I would say, I would say yeah, that yes, every ball is attackable. You just have to make sure that you're picking and choosing your spots wisely. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you, you know, you need to know where to attack when to attack and you have to be careful of, you know, who's in front of you and obviously always get ready for the ball coming back in the case that it does. Yep. Um, and I would, and I would say that it just, it translates, it translates to my game because I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the most consistent person out there. Um, but I feel like, you know, like Adam Stone calls it a uh, bully dinking. You know, every single ball that I hit just has like, you know, a lot of spin, you know, it's, it's like sharp angles, you know, and then if I just get a ball that's like somewhat high, then I'll just like try and tag in the chest with it. Right. And I would say that it's been working pretty well <laughs> for the most part, like, you know, probably been meddling at most tournaments and been doing pretty well. And I feel like, you know, I'm getting better every day. Um, but yeah. I would say, I would say, like, like I said, just every ball is attackable. You have to make sure that you're picking the right spot and you're, you know, you're also being wise about when you're doing it. Right. And, and I want people to understand when we talk about every ball being attackable, <clears throat> you don't necessarily mean every ball hitting as hard as possible, speeding up all the way through, you know, it could be, uh, you know, a third shot dink with, or a third shot drop with a lot of top spin. It could be a lob, you know, it could be a wide dink taking your opponent off the court, trying to get a pop-up. Attacking doesn't necessarily have to mean winding up and swinging through the ball. It could be, you know, dinking or lobbing or really anything that's just putting your opponent in an uncomfortable position, trying to get yourself, you know, an easy ball back. Yeah, great, great point. Obviously, like, uh, I think, I think lobs are underrated, right? Like, that's a good attack. And that's not hitting it far through someone, right? Um, I think when you're hitting the serve really hard and deep, that's also, you know, you're attacking the ball to some extent because you're not just, you know, getting it over. So I think I think any type of shots that you're being aggressive with and also just putting, you know, an extra amount of pressure that they wouldn't feel if you wouldn't doing if you wouldn't hitting that shot. I think that's somewhat of like, 
you know, a mini attack or an attack or something. It doesn't mean I have to like rip it right through your chest every time for sure. Great point. Yeah. Um, if you had to only hit one type of third shot for the rest of your pickleball career, either a drop or a drive, which would it be? Oh, I'm a dropper. I'm a dropper, baby. <laughs> I just, I think, I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I put a, uh, when I play, what you can't see through the live stream is the amount of spin that I use in all my shots, you know, which is part of the reason why um, uh, some of those shots can be inconsistent at times too. Cause I'm always like, I'm, I'm never hitting a knuckleball or I'm never hitting just kind of a neutral ball. Like everything has like some type of spin and it'll bounce and go sideways or have like top spin and, you know, really jump up on, on even third. So that's something that cannot really be appreciated over a live stream. But uh, that's what people realize when they have to like play with me or against me. So it's got to be a good, good top spin drop for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I've I've seen you play, and I, I know what you're talking about with the spins. So for anybody watching this, definitely look up uh, DJ Young highlights and and maybe almost put it in slow motion and see when when you're doing the the drop, you're, you're adding a lot of top spin. It's not just tapping it in. You know, um, we almost it was some of my friends and I we we call um, this type of shot the droop it's almost like a half drive half drop mm -hmm. thing that yeah that drop but you're actually kind of swinging through it adding a lot of topspin pushing your opponents off the line so we call it a droop yeah. um i think uh, we we're talking to zane he had a different name for it um drive drop um but it's the hybrid the hybrid right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and also like you know just another little story that just came up in my head i i was just that you know tim glitch by any chance he's the owner of the ranchers yeah, I've heard the name, yeah. Yeah, so he lives here in Austin, and he's, like, you know, my team owner. So, you know, we're we're pretty close after winning MLP, obviously. <laughs> and and I was actually at his place, and I was just hitting third shot drops, and he has a court in his backyard, that's why. And he was walking over, and he was he just, like, stood by the pole just watching me hit third shot drops. And he was – he said that just – by standing at the ball, me hitting drops, you could hear the ball like, you know, like when you hit a drive and it kind of like it does a, like a little visual or whatever. Yeah. So I, it was doing that with the drop. Wow. <laughs> so the, I don't know if it's true, but that's what he said. So, so how are you able to hit your, your, your drops with so much spin, um, you know, and so much weight behind it without actually overhitting? Oh, well, the carbon helps, right? <laughs> when you have that amount of extra grit. Um, some people might think it's legal. <laughs> but I would say I actually hold my paddle pretty, uh, I think it's Eastern. I don't know if that's the right name for it. Yeah. So I favor my forehand a lot more than I do my backhand. Um, just, you know, because of the way that I hold my paddle. But I would say that I'm able to just really get around it. So most people will hit from here or even sideways where mm -hmm. I'm really just like way under it and I come over it. Yeah. So people, people will hit top spin like this. I actually do it from here and bring it all the way over. Right. With, a, you know, face, like the face of the pedal is always wide open basically. So by starting under the ball, you're giving yourself more room to, to create the top spin. Yeah. Just, just a lot more for sure. And I just have a very like loose wrist. Like a lot of people are just very kind of like, you know, whatever they do, it's always like one where mine just kind of drops. And I used to them. I use, I usually use my wrist a lot on all my shots. So obviously you love pickleball. I love pickleball, you know, pretty much everyone in the pickleball world who's given the sport a chance has grown to love it. I'm wondering though, could you share a message to anybody out there who really hasn't heard of pickleball uh, or has heard of it, but refuses to try it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say, I would say, you know, just be, if, if you're not willing to try pickleball, you're probably not willing to try, you know, a lot of other things. Right. So I would say just be a little bit more open-minded and, you know, try and just, you know, you know, take one, one or two, three friends or, your girlfriend, your wife, your kids, whatever it is, and just give it a try because, you know, maybe you're not, maybe you're not really enjoying it, but maybe you eventually will like I did. 
uh, by your kids loving it or by your wife or something. And that's something you can eventually do together and, and learn how to do together. Um, I think, you know, I think loving the sport is great, but I think just the community and doing something with, you know, your friends or like I said, significant other, I think it's also very important and, and just overall healthy for, you know, yourself. Yeah. And I mean, look, you know, like you said before, when you first heard of the sport, you weren't super excited about trying it. I also, when I first heard of the sport, wasn't necessarily in love with the idea of trying it. And, and now it's such a, a big part of both our lives. Um, yeah. You know, most. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, like, you have no idea how, like, closed off I was. Because, you know, I'm from 18 to 22, like, I've grown a lot, right, as a person. Uh, but I was, I was just such a different person. And I was just like, you know, if this, if that, I'm not doing this, you know, whatever, like this sport is for all people. Like I was, it was the whole, like, should am <laughs> like all of it. And then, I mean, look at me now, just, you know, playing pickleball every day of my life, basically. Yes. sir, one of the top players in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I've never heard of a sport or, or really an activity in general where the majority of the people who play and love it were so reluctant to start. Like, I mean, you know, whether it's dance or basketball or art, I mean, people are interested because they hear about it or they see it, they want to try it and they love it. Mm -hmm. Pickleball almost always starts off like broccoli. Ew, no, I don't want it. And then you, you, you I mean, not that people love broccoli, but the sediment in the beginning, <laughs> is creative, and then it, I mean, it turns to, to love. Um, yeah. Well, and I think I think that's part of that is, you know, I'm not trying to be rude to anybody or anything, but I would say part of that is, you know, who who are you watch who are you watching that's actually doing it right? Like, I'm not going to mention any names in pickleball, but if I go play basketball, I mean, I'm watching like LeBron James, right? right? Like, who doesn't want to be six eight? 200 and like whatever pounds of like muscle dunking and jumping, you know, however, however high he jumps, right? Like, or if you're watching tennis and you're watching like Federer or Nadal, Djokovic, whatever it is, you're just like, oh my goodness, right? Or same thing with soccer, like Messi, Ronaldo, they're just like ripped. They're super fast. Like who doesn't want to be like that, right? And pickleball, I mean, it's getting better over the years, but, you know, maybe like four years ago when I started, you know, maybe I didn't want to, be like some of the pros back then <laughs> but, right. yeah and i think honestly that i think that's a lot a lot to do with it so i think with um maybe 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 younger people maybe fitter uh maybe more interesting better personalities coming in in the pro sport you know more people hopefully a kid will watch it online and you know watch my match and be like mom look that's teacher right there like, you know like that'd be cool too you know and i can inspire somebody to do it just like lebron or Feder or messi do honestly 100 yeah, percent. and i think that's that's you know we're really close to that point i mean whether it's other top pros or you i mean I definitely see kids looking at you being like damn i want to i want to be like that guy that guy looks cool 100 percent. i think it's just an awareness thing um if we, we had kids watching pickleball if we had you know a million kids watching pickleball tournaments on youtube or tv they would resonate to players like you it's just the awareness right now. We don't have enough kids, you know, um, watching it. I mean, we, I run a, a kids pickleball programs with, with 15 or 20 kids and we're trying to tell the kids, Hey, this isn't just the game to play with your parents. Pros are playing this kids, not too much older than you <laughs> playing the sport. Um, so I think once we get that, that, you know, younger age demographic really trickling down, they're going to not just want to play, but they're going to start really following players like, like you. Um, so you guys are in, in for a big ride. <laughs> Um, totally. And, and I think in my honest opinion, like, like I love pickleball, you know, I'm really happy that, uh, you know, I can basically make a living out of it as well. But to me, most importantly is, you know, to be really great at something, you know, just inspiring other people, making other people better as well. You know, if that is like my neighbor, Deckel Bar, and we can just practice and get better together to like, you know, some kid that just wants to like, grow up and play pickleball and you know take it seriously and just be you know like a healthy human overall so whatever it is just inspiring other people i think is very important 
Yeah, I mean, this is a perfect segue to into my next question. Um, you know, for younger kids that are really looking to take pickleball to the next level, I literally had a kid today tell me pickleball is my favorite sport. You know, for someone that wants to be as good as possible, see where they could they could really bring the sport. Um, what advice would you give them? <laughs> I would say, I would say, play as much pickleball as you can, but also, you know play other sports and and you know i think i think there's something to be learned you know if you play baseball if you play football tennis i mean a lot of different sports and then you can play pickleball on the side and still be great at it as of right now i don't know what it'll be like you know but i think if you're a kid just like you know play play be outdoors and play sports as much as you can and then really just play pickleball play soccer play whatever you want to play and you know, if you really, if when you get a little bit older and you really just want to play pickleball, then go at it. But until then, just, you know, do as many activities as you can for sure. Yeah. So I saw a recent video of you playing pickleball with NBA champion, all time great scorer, future Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. Durant. So I, I got to ask can he yeah. think as good as he could shoot? No. <laughs> No, he uh, he's definitely a much better basketball player, but I think he's got some potential. I think you can see in the in the little clip when I was playing against him, he had a little like back and flick cross court dink. So there's there's some potential in there, uh, but probably stick to basketball at this point. I got you. I mean, you gotta you gotta show him your your backhand flick and your earning. I mean, with his with his size, you know, he could be jumping all over the court. Yeah, if I was him, I would never dink. I would always attack. <laughs> From the baseline. I would just, uh, yeah, I mean, with his vertical, he can probably just birdie every shot anyway, right? So just never let the ball bounce, you know, besides the third ball rule, whatever, after the serve or after the return. So just, like, take everything out of the air and then just Ernie and birdie everything. That's all you got to do at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a couple questions left. Uh, just to, this is kind of a more fun one. I know you have a bunch of tat tattoos. I'm wondering, do you have any pickleball related tattoos? And if not, do you have any <laughs> uh, I do have a lot of tattoos. I do not have any pickleball tattoos, but I will say that after I won MOP with the ranchers, I was very close to getting the Rancher logo somewhere in my body. Very close. And I have not been men enough to do it so far. Can, can we set a goal here? Like if you, if you get gold in your next tournament or if you reach one in the world, if you reach one in the world, will you get a pickleball tattoo? Yes, I will. All right. That's yes. certified. As of, as of this interview, we're going we're gonna to put that down in the books. I will. I, if I reach number one in the world in pickleball or in anything ever, I will get a tattoo of it for sure. All right. Well, what if I say you're number one in the world in being interviewed? Then you got to go get one right now. And then what kind of tattoo would I get then? A laptop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're some, I should get like no regrets. Like that one guy. <laughs> I misspelled, misspelled it. <laughs> get the pickleball clinic tattoo. Well, that, that would be great. I could do that. Who's the, who's the silhouette uh, of? We, we kind of modeled it vaguely after the NBA logo. Um, yeah. So it's not, I mean, there's no person. We kind of just, you know, had this made, but that, the NBA logo was the inspiration. Gotcha. Nice. Very cool. Um, you mentioned MLP. So could you talk a little bit about your experience with MLP, how it was, you know, winning, uh, and just overall kind of the landscape of what MLP is and, and your experience in it? Yeah, so MLP is basically, uh, it's owned by Steve Kuhn, owner of Dreamland as well. Uh, you know, super nice guy. He's the one that took me in here. Uh, big reason of, you know, where I am, where, you know, where I am today, basically. Uh, and MLP itself is a team, is a pickleball team event. Uh, it's a major league pickleball. Uh, you know, two girls, two guys, rally score into 21. Uh you play women's and you play men's and you play mixed. And if you, if you tie, you go to the dream breaker. Uh, so it's obviously very fun, very fast paced. Uh, actually a lot of money involved too, obviously. Um, 
And my team owner is Tim Klitsch, uh, the ranchers. Uh, very fortunate to meet that team. And honestly, like like their slogan or whatever it is says, like there's nothing else like it, right? right? Like, I mean, if you, I don't know if you were there or if you watched the finals of uh, MOP, but I mean, it was absolutely insane. Like, er- like everybody was clapping after every point. Everybody was yelling. We were all fired up. Like I was just talking smack the whole time. Yeah. You know, Anna Bride is huge, like just a huge, you know, just massive, amazing team uh, player, right? And playing playing alongside with her was really fun. We won a lot of matches together. Uh, I mean, it was honestly, I don't think, even, even if I was going to win Ohio again, which, you know, you never know, like we could, we couldn't. I don't think you could recreate the same thing again. I think every single time you would win MLP at this point, it would just be special. Yeah. Like it just, it just feels different. Like, like, I don't know. It's, I can go and win like the WPC and like, nobody cares. Like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of another tournament in a sense, like, you know, maybe not a lot of people watching, but just being on CBS and all the professional cameras and, you know, everyone's watching there there's so many people uh all that money on the line the nerves the adrenaline too obviously i mean it, it was just huge honestly and i had a, i had a really good time probably my favorite pickleball uh moment in my entire career so right now and uh, that's like money inside too like the money was like it's nice to have it but it's not like life-changing either if that makes sense uh so to me just the whole experience was just like yeah out of this, out of this world really what do you think about the future of mlp do you have any any kind of insight or, or ideas or thoughts on- <laughs> i do i do uh i don't know if i can share it though uh i'm not gonna get too into detail because you know i don't want to get in trouble yeah but th- there'll be there'll be six mlps next year Okay. Uh, and after that, I can't really tell you much more. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So may- maybe draft at the end of the year, maybe more teams. There'll be 16 teams uh, and six MLPs next year. Besides that, I don't know how much more I can share. Sorry. I, I respect it. I respect it. Um, and then a, a last question. This is something I love to ask to pretty much every pro player I talk to. Why do you love pickleball? Why do I love pickleball? Uh, to me, it was, it's just been life-changing. Like, you know, we talked about in the beginning, uh, you know, why would, what would I be doing if it wasn't pickleball? And I don't know, right? Like, I would have not gone to college. I don't know if I'd be working some minimum weight, you know, job, which is not, nothing bad, obviously, but, you know, maybe not something that I want to be doing. Uh, definitely not studying, like I said. So to me, it was just life-changing. I love, I love how positive uh, and how how my last four years of my life have been. I think I've been really fortunate to like play pickleball and teach it and work at Bobby Riggs and being here at Dreamland and, you know, knowing Steve Kuhn and getting to be a good friends with them and meeting Kevin Durant, meeting James Blake, meeting all these people, Drew Brees. Uh, I mean, you know, just, just all of it is just utterly insane. Really, <laughs> I mean, I would have never thought in in my eighteen years pre pickleball that I would be doing this. Just traveling around, loving my life, you know, not worrying about the bill, you know, eating, you know, expensive steaks all the time. <laughs> like it's 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 honestly like just out of this world experience that I would not trade for anything. And honestly, you know, where you are and where the sport of pickleball is, whatever excitement, you know, and, and atmosphere that pickleball has, has added to your life, I think is, is literally here and going this way. Because the way the sport is growing for all the players, everybody involved, I think we're just at the beginning and things are going to be getting crazier and crazier for many years to come. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think... You know, everyone talks about the future, obviously, and I think it'll be great. Uh, but players-wise, to be completely honest with you, I mean, people forget that I'm 22, 
right? Or, you know, Dylan's 20, 21 in December. Jada, probably 19. I mean, Ben is 23. Like, I don't think any of us are going anywhere <laughs> any, anytime soon. And I mean, with all the training that I've, that I've been doing recently, because I've only really been taking pickleball seriously the past nine months. You know, before that, I was teaching, you know, teaching uh, a Bobby Riggs and playing pickleball every now and then. And, oh, Callum, let's play this tournament. And we just go and try and do our best, right? But, I mean, just getting better every single tournament. And, you know, I come back from um, on Sunday and then Monday at 5, 6 a.m. I'm already up either at the gym or, you know, drilling with Leia Jensen or, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing. So, I mean, we're, we're young or I'm young and I, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I think it's only going to get better. hundred percent. I agree. Well, uh, I mean, the pickleball world is, is, is really happy to have people like you in it. And I think, you know, we're all going up as a, as a unit. So I yeah, really for sure. Thanks, bro. This, this was really great. So, you know, thanks so much. Yeah. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks everyone for, Whoever's going to watch, I hope you enjoyed. And, you know, hopefully you get a little insight of uh, who I really am as a person. <laughs>